Oh, hi there. That's so corny. Welcome back to episode 15 of All the Mods 7. To make the ATM star and parts and pieces that are required for the ATM star, we need two different types of antimatter. FTB industrial contraptions, which is basically a remake of IC2, which is Industrial Craft 2. So I guess you could call this Industrial Craft 3. And we need antimatter from mechanism. First one we're going to do in the video is the antimatter from the FTB industrial contraptions because there's not a lot of information out there on it. Here's a parts list of what you're going to need to power the nuclear reactor that's going to power an antimatter constructor and make us antimatter. Did you get all that? Good. The part that's kind of confusing is making these things here, the quad uranium fuel rod. Not confusing, but can be kind of uh, an arduous process, let's say. You have to can fluid cells with uranium dust, fluid cells that are filled with water. So nobody wants to stand here with an empty fluid cell and fill up 8,000 with water. So this is the create and other mod contraption that I came up with to turn fluid cells into fluid cells filled with water. I have a depot here with a crafter underneath. Inside the crafter, I have a recipe that's telling this to put an empty fluid cell and it's gonna get back a fluid cell filled with water. So that puts an empty fluid cell on this depot. This spout that's being filled with water from an electric pump is gonna fill the cell up with water and it's going to discharge through this brass funnel right here. Now the only goofy thing is you have to put an attribute filter on there or else it'll pull out every empty cell that you put on there and it doesn't know that it has water or doesn't have water. So the way you can stop that is you take an empty fluid cell with this attribute filter, put it in here and then scroll down to contains air and we're going to deny anything that contains air. So you would just hit check right here. Boom, pop the attribute filter in there. So now we can order all the parts and pieces that we need. And this thing's making the fluid cells as needed to go into the canning machine that's mixing it with uranium dust and it's gonna up it all the way to the quad uranium cell. I goofed there. You have to hit the plus mark once you have this contains air selected. Boom, hit plus, it adds a filter and then hit the check. Another thing we need to watch out for with this mod is this antimatter constructor. If you look at the max input, it says 8192 whatever a tick. So we need a cable to match that. And this is the cable we're going to use, IV cable, because it has the same max input. We're going to set this cable up from the reactor to the antimatter constructor. LV is the lowest source of power in this mod. So that's what I'm using to power these four machines that are making the parts and pieces that we're using. If you don't match the correct power to the machine, you'll either burn the machine up or burn the cable up. So this is all LV and up top here, I have LV solar panels that are powering all these machines. I have all the parts and pieces that I need now to make this FTB contraptions antimatter constructor deal. So let's do it by the nuclear reactor from mechanism, except I need to turn this thing off because it's kind of loud. So let's do that for now. This has a chance to blow up. So why not blow it up if it's gonna blow up next to the nuclear reactor? Horrible idea, I know. Nuclear reactor goes there. We're gonna put IV cable from that to the antimatter constructor. Now, access the GUI of this nuclear reactor. It won't do anything right now because it doesn't have the parts that it needs. First thing we're gonna add is these quad uranium fuel rods. And you're going to have to bear with me because I'm looking at a picture. One goes there. One goes there. One goes there. 
Goes there. One goes there. There. One there. Now we're gonna do the reactor plating. gets filled in with these overclock. Somehow miraculously we have the right amount of parts. Now if we hit this check this question mark here it tells us this reactor will not explode. This reactor will run for 20,000 seconds, max generated, blah, 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 total energy generated. There we go. So we can run this. Hit play. It's running. These have a lifespan that will run out, but hopefully not run out before the antimatter constructor makes the antimatter that we're after. She's chooching. I'll bring it back when it's done. Any second now, we should have, boom, there we go. We got our first piece of antimatter for the FTB industrial contraptions mod. Now, what I didn't say or mention is that you want to place these down in the order that I did, meaning before you activate this reactor, you want to have this cable hooked up to the antimatter constructor because what will happen is if you have this reactor powered and it's storing energy in there and then you go to hook this cable up, It'll burn the cable up, even though it's the correct cable for this contraption. There's something goofy with the mod. So just do it this way. It'll work just fine. I don't know about you, but something that seems disproportional here between these two mods. These two blocks make antimatter. We need all this to do it with mechanism. Matter of fact, I did a video a couple videos ago about making this fission reactor, the turbine to make power and the induction casing to store the power that we're going to need for what we're about to do. Also how to get these polonium pellets and plutonium pellets, which we need to make this stuff right here, SPS casing, because we're going to make a super critical phase shifter to make antimatter in mechanism. It's going to give us this liquid one and then we need to run it through a chemical crystallizer in order to get antimatter pellets. And we need to feed it polonium and a lot of energy to power this supercharged coil to do that process. Let me make up all the parts pieces that we need and I think I'm going to dismantle this half because we're done with the plutonium pellets for now. We have more than enough and we only want to make polonium and feed the supercritical phase shifter with that. I've had this off for a while, but I'm going to put the suit on just to remain safe. I got the suit on. This will keep me safe. If there's any nuclear waste left in here, I have the reactor off. The pipe shows zero in the system. So we should be good to go. All I need to do is break this and we're only going to feed into the solar neutron activators. Then we'll break this here. We can run our output pipe janky dire wire style over top of the induction matrix. And I'll put the SPS thing right here. All right, let's build this supercritical phase shifter. You need SPS casing. 
goes down like this. Three, one, three, one, three, one, three. And then we're going to fill this bottom layer in with reactor glass. All right, now we need to bring these four sides up. So I'm going to put cobblestone blocks down on these four corners as a temporary block. We're going to put an SPS casing on top of each one of these. Boom. Now we take a cobblestone block, put it right here. We're gonna go up three high. I'll put reactor glass, reactor glass on these. It's a SPS casing on top of each one of these. And the last thing we gotta do is put the top three in. So I'm going to use reactor glass on here. Put SPS casing on top of it. Now we have a structure that looks like that. Let me get rid of these. And the last layer we have to fill in is the top layer. We're going to do the same exact pattern. So I'm just going to put a cobblestone block right there, right there right there and right there and then we're going to put sps casing on those four corners and then the top layer can get filled in completely with reactor glass rid of these cobble And that's the basic shape that we need supercritical phase shifter we just need ports we need a port for bringing the polonium in so we're going to bring that right along here and it's going to go in right up top here and then we need a port for energy to power this supercharged coil, which I'm going to put on the inside, but let me configure these first. That wants to be an input. This is an input. And the last one we need is an output. I'm going to put the output right here. So the only one that needs to be configured is this an output. Take a supercharged coil. We're going to put that right on that SPS port. And then we need to run a power cable from our induction matrix to that once we finish this. We need to fill the rest of this in with glass. Should have a supercritical phase shifter. There we go. Status is idle. The machine actually made. That's how you make the supercritical phase shifter. So now I just need to port... Polonium, we're going to bring it up over top of the induction matrix and right into supercritical phase shifter. Boom, like so. We can hook up our power to the port with the laser. Boom, it now has power. So the only thing we need to do is fire up this guy here to make nuclear waste to feed the solar neutron activators. They should be pulling out polonium, sending it into here. It's doing its thing. It's making very slowly antimatter that we need to convert using a chemical crystallizer all right change of plans so i had this power cable hooked up this thing was chooching the whole time and it really wasn't doing anything but wasting power so i unhooked the cable 
and I'm letting this fill up with polonium now and I also rerouted how I'm doing the polonium you can use these radioactive waste barrels to store polonium so it's going into the top it has to be imported in the top and then exported out the bottom of it pulling it back out the bottom going to build up a decent supply of polonium to send into the supercritical phase shifter before I hook this power cable back up. I got the chemical crystallizer. You take a basic pressurized tube or any tube, it'll pull the antimatter that this is making into the chemical crystallizer. And then once this has a thousand millibuckets, it should turn it into an antimatter pellet that we're after. But I need to let this run for like two hours or so to fill up with a decent amount of polonium. I'm gonna do that, I'll bring it back. Hopefully this thing will look cool because I need a good screenshot. There is now 100,000 millibuckets plus of polonium in this pipe. So we should be good to go. The last thing I have to do is just hook up this power cable again. That should chooch and make an antimatter pellet. But while that's doing that, let's get a cool screenshot in case we want it for the YouTubes. Perfect. She's chooching. It's making antimatter. It's going into this chemical crystallizer. And once this hits a thousand millibuckets, we'll get our first piece of antimatter. All that for this. All you need is this. Amazing. <laughs> Folks, that's going to be the end of the video, though. I'm going to let that run, get my antimatter going. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. Have fun and peace. That was only enough for 110 millibuckets. I'm horrible at math. I needed a million polonium. I'll let this run. Oh, my.